What we do in life echoes in eternity. What up, y'all? It's Devin with UpTV2, a.k.a. The Doc Connector. And do you remember when the masses were told to ignore those so-called crazy conspiracy theories about the dangers of fluoride in our drinking water? Well, it turns out that those crazy conspiracy theorists were once again right. A recent government report has revealed that twice the recommended limit of fluoride is the cause for a lower IQ in kids. Too much fluoride in water is linked to lower IQ in children. That's according to a new study out tonight. Now, this study found that kids drinking water at twice the recommended limit of fluoride could drop the IQ of a child between two and five points. We know that fluoride strengthens teeth and reduces cavities, and adding a small amount to drinking water has long been considered one of the greatest public health achievements of the last century. This report did not reach a conclusion about what low levels of fluoride might do to children it said that more research was needed on that, and it also didn't have any results on what high levels of fluoride might do to adults. So if you didn't believe it because you thought it was just a conspiracy theory, then perhaps people will listen now that the government is officially admitting that fluoride is destroying the minds of our youth. But it's not as if the data and facts didn't exist before this government report. Many scientists and dentists have warned for quite some time that fluoride was unsafe, not only in our drinking water, but toothpaste as well. But regardless of how many studies prove that fluoride is dumbing down the population, there are many people who still believe that it's essential to keep it in our drinking water. Scrub, 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 ready? Abby Udi Smith is extra careful about brushing her son Teddy's teeth. Now that her local tap water no longer contains fluoride. After community members in Union County, North Carolina, came forward to express concerns, the county commission voted three to two to remove it. I didn't even know that there was a fight against fluoride. Ready? Are you ready to come back? She's now scrambling to figure out what to do next for her two small children. We're going to have to talk about possibly supplementing. Or Dentist Meg Lockery is alarmed. She says fluoride, a naturally occurring mineral, should be added to public water to help develop strong teeth especially for small children and those without access to a dentist. Toothpaste with fluoride, she says, is not enough because the fluoride needs to be ingested. We know that fluoride works. All the journal articles have shown that there's a 25% reduction in children and adult decay for people that are in community fluoridated water. Despite being the norm for decades in local debates, the nationwide fight over fluoride and water is reaching new heights in the wake of COVID and the anti-vax movement, pitting dentists like Lockery. I hope you consider leaving the fluoride in the water for the most vulnerable of our population. Against activists. How long can our society bear the cost of knowingly lowering our population's IQ? Family. The world is in serious danger now. Inflation is causing food prices to skyrocket. The global supply chain continues to collapse, and the coming food shortages will be worse than anything we've lived through. In times like these, what should you do? Go to uptvsurvival.com and invest in long-term emergency food storage from my friends at My Patriot Supply while you still can. My Patriot Supply is the largest preparedness company in America with millions of satisfied customers. Their food lasts for up to 25 years in storage. When you need it, you will have it and avoid government food lines. Act quickly and save $200 on a vital three-month emergency food kit. This kit provides a variety of delicious foods totaling over 2,000 calories a day. You won't go hungry when you have this emergency food, period. Go to uptvsurvival.com and save $200 on every three-month food kit. That's uptvsurvival.com. Protect your family and secure this emergency food today by going to uptvsurvival.com. Our whole lives, we've been told that fluoride in our drinking water is harmless. We've been told that fluoride in the water we drink helps to prevent tooth decay by strengthening teeth and making them more resistant to decay. But are these claims about the safety and benefits of fluoride in our water the truth or a complete myth? How did it even become a common thing to add fluoride to our drinking water? Is the fluoride in our water the same fluoride that is in our toothpaste? And how in the world do they even add fluoride to the water we drink every day? I think the answer to these questions 
may shock you. When was the last time you stopped to think about the one thing you can't live without? No, I'm not talking about the internet. I'm talking about water. Without clean drinking water, life couldn't go on. So it's probably important that we know what's in the water we drink. The past 65 years, city governments nationwide have been adding a substance called fluoride to the water supply. The practice of water fluoridation started at a time in history when asbestos, PCBs, and DDT were all deemed safe and effective. And although all of these chemicals have been banned since, fluoridation is still a common practice. However, it's uniquely American. The U.S. has more people drinking fluoridated water than the rest of the world combined. In fact, most industrialized nations do not fluoridate their water, including Japan and 97% of Europe. So what exactly is it that we're ingesting? Well, it's not the same fluoride that's in your toothpaste. What's being added to municipal water supplies is a fluorine compound called hydrofluorosilicic acid and it's a byproduct from the phosphate fertilizer industry. Yes, you heard me right. Let me break this down for you. Gaseous fluoride is produced during fertilizer production. Now, it used to go straight to the atmosphere from these factories, but presently, filtration devices are used to contain the toxic chemicals, and what's extracted from the filters is then condensed into a water-based solution, which is packaged unrefined and sold to city governments for the purpose of water fluoridation. So how did this all start? Well, interestingly, in 1944, the American Dental Association themselves published that it was not worth the health risk to fluoridate water supplies. Too bad no one heeded their warning, because the very next year, Grand Rapids, Michigan became the first community to fluoridate. And what happened next would not have been possible without a push from the aluminum industry, which was looking for a way to safely discard their fluoride pollution and waste. In 1947, Oscar Ewing, a paid attorney for Alcoa, the biggest aluminum company in the U.S., was picked to oversee the Public Health Service, which is now known as the Department of Health and Human Services. He then made clear his lingering ties to the aluminum industry by promoting water fluoridation as one of the first official policies of the department. From there, the policy expanded tenfold, with an additional 87 U.S. cities fluoridating within the next three years. Fast forward to today, where children are growing up indoctrinated with the notion that fluoridated water is necessary because it prevents tooth decay. But is that really the case? In 1987, the National Institute of Dental Research examined 39,000 school children from 84 different fluoridated and non-fluoridated communities. And while the study did find that in fluoridated areas, tooth decay declined, the most interesting part is that there was a declining trend in tooth decay in non-fluoridated areas too, perhaps because of overall better hygiene. Okay, but not only is there no causal link, there's also serious health risks for fluoride overexposure. For one, an excess of fluoride causes fluorosis, which is the eating away of the enamel on your teeth. This is indicative of what it's doing to your body on a larger scale. You see, it doesn't just eat away at the tooth enamel. Only 50% of the fluoride we consume is excreted. The rest is absorbed throughout our bodies, our pineal glands, and our bones. In fact, an alarming study by the U.S. Public Health Service, which was later confirmed by Harvard Medical School, found that a deadly type of bone cancer called osteosarcoma was significantly higher in fluoridated communities than in non-fluoridated communities. However, the most distressing findings come from 18 studies done worldwide showing a substantial lowering of IQ in overly fluoridated areas. And there are many more adverse effects than just those. Not to mention that the FDA admits that fluoride is a drug, not a nutrient. Multiple ethical codes are being violated here by forcing us to ingest this drug. Look, let's call it like it is. Water fluoridation has nothing to do with said benefits. Think about it. We're already getting our fair share of this substance through the dentist and the toothpaste we use every day. And what about the processed foods we're already eating and drinking on a daily basis? We get more than enough. So the argument that we need to ingest this substance as well is baseless. 
Look guys, no matter what you think about fluoride, the real issue here is having a choice. No chemical, no matter what its alleged benefits are, should be forced upon the public without their consent. Let's not forget, as long as corporations are involved, our best interest isn't really the priority. So maybe we should be looking at water fluoridation as a money-making scam. The tale that's all too familiar. Governments and industry colluding to save money instead of saving lives. The only reasons I believe anyone would want to keep fluoride in our water supply is because either they don't know the real facts about fluoride and how dangerous it is, or they do know and they simply don't care because they personally benefit from dumbing the public down with this poison. Or perhaps the fluoride has already lowered their IQ, and now when you say any significant truth about fluoride, they simply give you the fluoride stare back. But what are your thoughts? Sound off in the comment section and let me know. And because there will be no up TV without viewers like you, I would like to give a special shout out to anybody who has donated to or supported the channel in any type of way. This is Devin with up TV too. I love you family. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also hit that bell so you get notified anytime I upload a new video. As always, give your life to Yeshua and I'll holla at y'all later. Peace. Did you know that there's fluoride in the water that the government uses to control our minds? I forgot, nobody cares about the end of the world. Thank you for watching Up TV 2. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button to Up TV 2 and Up TV, or watch one of these great videos here and enjoy. Peace.